What's going on, y'all? Today we got the end of Dylan Brooks. Yeah, I've been hearing he, you know what I'm saying? The uh, Memphis Grizzlies don't want to sign the ball no more. You know what I'm saying? LeBron out here at the Grizz and shit. 40 ball, get about the gym. You know what I'm saying? That's how we coming. Let's get into this. Do you feel like your team at large took things for granted this year that you hadn't taken for granted in the past? No. Ja, you know the I'm fine in the West comment's going to get thrown back in your face at this point. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't care. I said it. You know, I deal with it. I respect that, issue. though, bro. I, ain't gonna lie. I can respect that. I can respect that. You know what I'm saying? But you know. But ducking the media is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's part of your job. That was my decision making. I have a bold take for you here, and this is coming from a Laker fan, of course. The Memphis Grizzlies could have beat the Los Angeles Lakers in a seven game series. They definitely had the talent to. I don't necessarily think that's the most boldest take at all, but if there's been one theme over this past weekend, it's the fact that there are teams that are capable of shooting themselves in the foot as a result of not being fully locked in at the task at hand. And as a matter of fact, I think that's the entire theme of the Memphis Grizzlies season. Good news is, is it seems like some people acknowledge that that's the reality or some other people <coughs> not so much so I wanted to make this video originally for you guys on Sunday but of course we had to cover the Warriors versus the Kings so we saved this video for today before we get to the content we are 2,000 followers away <laughs> From 100,000 followers on Instagram. Once we get there, we're going to be giving away cash prizes to all my followers that turn on my notifications on Instagram. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Intro, tough intro. Some of the green slips you guys have been sending me is crazy. Like $1,250 off of a $250 slip or $1,500 off of a $150 power play. We've been making bank off of our basketball picks, bro. March Madness was a huge success. And believe me, we're about to ramp it up for the NBA you playoffs. This last All time. you have to do is download prize picks, use my promo code microphone, and they'll match your first deposit up to $100 instantly oh, man, after that, that just follow me on instagram i post all of my picks onto my instagram story for free and we can start mm. making money off of these picks together mike check one two one two what's going on everybody the memphis grizzlies have underwent a very impressive rebuild over the past couple of years yeah they weren't necessarily a team that has ever made it to the very top of the western conference they had some very epic matchups in the early 2010s including being the last team prior to this year to be an eighth seed that defeated Defeated the top seed in the Western Conference when they faced off against the San Antonio Spurs. But when they moved on from the grit and grind era, they were able to get themselves very talented franchise cornerstones relatively quickly. And it's a huge testament to how remarkable their general manager was at drafting the players they did. In the 2018 NBA draft, they selected this year's Defensive Player of the Year, Jaron Jackson Jr., with the fourth overall pick. One year later, they lucked into getting the second overall pick in the 2019 NBA draft. Back when we were saying that the second overall pick in the NBA draft typically is cursed, Memphis Grizzlies got lucky. With the New Orleans Pelicans taking Zion Williamson with the number one overall pick, the Grizzlies were able to take John Morant with the second pick. As before, we get to some very good acquisitions that they made during the draft process via trades. I mean, they acquired Desmond Bain, who was the 30th pick in the 2020 NBA draft following a trade with the Boston Celtics. They are able to acquire young talent that truly bought into their vision of being a hard hard-nosed team that not only had the capability of pushing the pace, but also had the capability of playing suffocating defense. As a result, throughout the season, they ranked second in defensive rating, fourth in net rating, and this is all because of players like John Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr., Steven Adams, Tyus Jones, and Desmond Bain. Whereas you did have Dylan Brooks doing his best to become Draymond Green light, and we'll get to that in just a sec. <laughs> the Memphis Grizzlies were clearly on top of the world. They were the second seed in the West. Western Conference for a reason. The only team that was able to stop them wasn't the Lakers, but it was also themselves. In Greek mythology, there is a term called hubris. And hubris is defined as someone that has excessive pride or self-confidence. And you tell me, does this seem like a person that has excessive pride? Who do you look at around the league as you're studying and say, we're gonna have to run through them? Celtics. No one in the West. Nah. 
I'm fine in the West. And that wasn't the only issue. I mean, of course, you're a young team that is really coming into its own, and it appears as though you are the top team in the West. The Golden State Warriors, the defending champions, were still trying to figure out how to pick up the pieces after, well, Draymond Green punched the living sh out of he Jordan Poole. Yeah, As a matter of fact, the last crazy, time I saw dude, a team do something even crazy. remotely close to this was, well, none other than LeBron James. You remember when LeBron did this? But we also know you three kings came down here to win championships. Not one, championships. Not two. LeBron, tell us about that. Not two, not three, not four, not five, not six. Nah. Not <laughs> you were crazy. You were oh. dumb. I would go like two, man. Hey. Yeah, Ironically, yeah, 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 they would only yeah, yeah. win two, which is still fantastic, which is still remarkable. It is really funny because choose the number he skipped at the end of the day. And the Miami Heat were definitely capable of way, way more. Same time, we're talking about a relatively young-ish LeBron James that was still learning a lot about himself, but I digress. Historically, there isn't a lot of teams that go out and brag about how good they are and then end up winning it all. As a matter of fact, a lot of sports fans love seeing those teams lose because it gives us moments like this. Ja, you know the I'm fine in the West comments gonna get thrown back in your face at this point. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't care. I said it. You know, I deal with it. So. I mean, I don't think there's a better feeling in all of sports than a team that talks a copious amount of trash like this. I don't care. He's old. <laughs> no, no. I pulled bears. Talking uh, crazy. Talking crazy out his mouth. You know what I'm saying? Now look at you. Out of a job. You know what I'm saying? Like, chill, boy. I don't respect chill, no boy. Until they come. What are you doing that? And then having the opposing team handle it like this. I don't want to talk much more. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a great game. I'm not here for the bullshit. I'm ready to play, and that's it. I appreciate it. And then having the beef continue like this. And then ultimately, at the conclusion of the series, you're seeing a bunch of clips like this. <laughs> no, yeah, it was on the last. Shut it down, then the huh? random dude was trying to help him out. But I will admit, I have to give a lot of props to John Moran. Not necessarily Dylan Brooks, but most definitely John Moran. Dylan Brooks' career, by the way, might be in jeopardy here. I mean, after spending an entire year doing dance routines like this, and then giving us meme-worthy moments, like suggesting that LeBron James doesn't want to go left. Who doesn't want to go left? Who doesn't want to go left? Who doesn't want to go left? He wanted James, he gets him. James drives. James is So up until this point, if you notice, this wasn't completely a Dylan Brooks centered video and it won't continue as a Dylan Brooks centered video because I wanted to be fair when it came to judging this entire Memphis Grizzlies team. And I want to highlight each and everything that could have potentially okay. ruined their season. But it seems like the Memphis Grizzlies believe that a huge symptom of their failure was none other than Dylan Brooks. And we're going to actually bring you an interview from their general manager later on in this video, but we can't continue this video without bringing you this piece of news first. According to Shams Charania, the Memphis Grizzlies have informed pending free agent Dylan Brooks that he will not be brought back under any circumstances, league sources. That boy out of a job now, boy, don't be fucking with the game. I go, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? You, 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 you I'm saying like, say, Guys, I want you to know, Dumbass. this is insane. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen this terminology whenever it comes to telling a player that he's not being brought back. Usually, a team won't even say anything at all, and they just won't re-sign the player, and then obviously you'll get the hint. But telling a player almost immediately after their playoff <laughs> series loss that he will not be brought back underneath any circumstances is something I don't think I've ever seen before. So the article goes like this. The Trash, Memphis Grizzlies man. have informed pending unrestricted Trash. free agent Dylan Brooks that he will not be brought back under any circumstances. League sources tell The Athletic. After his tumultuous end to the season, Brooks was told about the Grizzlies' decision to move on in exit meetings with team officials in recent days, those sources said. Memphis and Brooks discussed in exit meetings that it's best for both sides to have a fresh start, sources added. 
Brooks's first round series against the Lakers was considered to be a breaking point. In the span of the Grizzlies series loss in six games, he called LeBron James the Lakers best player and a four-time NBA champion old, <laughs> tired, and suggested that he was not as good as he used to be. Brooks punched LeBron James in the groin area in game three, earning an ejection. He missed a defensive assignment to help on James on the game tying basket in game four, and then gave up a critical basket to LeBron James in overtime of that loss. Brooks also chose not to speak to the media after three of the losses in the series, resulting in a $25,000 fine by the NBA. Lakers job, also boy, left Brooks do open that. during the series and dared him to shoot, using an extra defender to keep all stars John Morant from driving or to blitz Desmond Bain on the perimeter. Brooks shot 31.2% from the field and 23.8% from three in the series trash, while averaging 10.5 points and shooting nasty, nearly 13 like, shots per game. Trash, the one thing that I will say dookie. about Dylan Brooks that probably drives me the craziest is him giving us moments where he is talking excessive amounts of trash to a player that clearly is significantly better than him and then not holding himself accountable once he gets his boot kicked and once he gets embarrassed on national TV. He missed multiple post-game conferences and not only is it embarrassing to his team, but it's embarrassing you know what I'm saying? to himself as a man. And that's what I can't respect. That's what I can't. Yeah, like, as a man, you can't take your, your, your consequences. You know what I'm saying? You know what you did. You know. That's why I can respect y'all. You know what I'm saying? He sat in front of the, the media, took what came with it. Uh, I said that. Yeah, that's me. You know what I'm saying? I can respect that. Dylan Brooks, he running from all the smoke. Brooks and it kind of gives us all the feeling that Dylan Brooks isn't really serious about the game of basketball at a particular point. If you're really serious about the game of basketball and you're not necessarily the greatest basketball player in the world, yet you're dressing up like your Stone Cold Steve Austin or you're dressing up like your Outcast or you're dressing up in all these fancy outfits just so you could trend, and then you're talking a bunch of trash to other teams just so you could trend because you want to become the next coming of Patrick Beverly or Draymond Green, then there's clearly a problem. I don't think basketball is on the forefront of Dylan Brooks's mind, and he certainly isn't anything close to Draymond Green. Remember last year in Game 5 of the Western Conference playoffs where the Memphis Grizzlies decimated the Golden State Warriors 134-95, to and Draymond Green didn't avoid any post-game press conferences, and he held himself accountable? We got, we got our ass kicked, that's alright, it happens, but you don't be front runner. You know, when 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 you spew it out, you gotta you gotta be willing to take it and, and not hide from it, not duck you from it, it, not run from it, embrace it. You be seeing real niggas shit, Draymond. So Took I appreciated trophy. the crowd tonight uh, and the energy that they brought to the game. You know, if they, if they want to whoop that trick, we gonna whoop them Look, again. Rolo's There's a right 40, way and a wrong way to be controversial. Media. Sure, I don't necessarily agree with everything Draymond does. Job. I mean, stepping on Sabonis's chest, uh, that's definitely a difficult one to really point out because you either think Sabonis grabbed his leg or that Draymond Green was completely out of line. By the end of the day, Draymond Green will approach the media and he'll hold himself accountable whenever he does something I wrong. Think, and he'll be very vo- I think Sabonis grabbed his leg and Draymond was out of line. <laughs> I'm saying it could be both. vocal about it, but he'll also be very real about it. Like when he said this about Demodis Sabonis. Lost a lot of respect for Sabonis. You don't shake guys' hands after you lose. I don't respect that. I won't. You lost. Deal with it. The thing is, we talked about this in our video on the Golden nah, State real, Warriors though. once they defeated real. the Sacramento Kings. The truly That's great just, teams are able to overcome significant you. amounts of adversity. It's a symptom of winning many championships. In year one, you're on a high and you're so excited that you've arrived. In year two, you might be getting burnt out because you're the defending champs and people are bringing their A game against you. Once you're trying to win your third championship in a row, or once you add that superstar player onto your team and there's a huge target on your back, there may be some controversy. But through it all, the best teams are able to overcome it. That's why I was so surprised that the Golden State Warriors were able to beat the Sacramento Kings to begin with. There was so much against them. Jordan Poole was playing like garbage. Andrew Wiggins played like garbage in Game 7. Yet, <coughs> Steph Curry was able to carry his team to a victory so they could advance and face off against the Lakers in the Western Conference Semifinals. A series that I think is going to be one of the greatest series in NBA history. But in the case of the Memphis Grizzlies, it's really obvious what got in their way. They really bought into their hype a little bit too much. The good news is, it seems like they acknowledge this. I mean, here's the general manager talking about maturity. I mean, 
as I said, I, like there, there were definitely, you know, some self-created distractions, you know, in the series and, and along the way. We're going to take a different approach, you know, as it pertains mm-hmm. to that next season. I, I think uh, you'll, you know, you'll see a different approach from this team. But at the same time, confidence is important. A re, you know, there's nothing wrong with, cool. you know, some level of, of trash talking. We, we, yep. we want a group that goes out there and competes and, yep. you know, is in that together. And that that's part of the NBA, you know, at some that's level. Fact, but, um, there, there's a line, you know, there's a yep. line there, certainly. And... I don't think He's that's saying a whole bunch of facts right now. You know what I'm saying? And I think there's no other person that learned a bigger lesson from this year than John Moran. We've made too many videos on John Moran this year. I mean, I could recite each and every controversy he got into in the order that it occurred off the top of my head. From him being accused of allegedly punching a 17-year-old kid at his home, to him appearing at the mall to confront a security guard to defend his mom, to Indiana Pacers security guards claiming that they saw a laser trailing on their heads at the conclusion of their game with the Memphis Grizzlies to John Morant himself posting a video of himself with a gun onto his social media while he's at a strip club. All of these were distractions. And John Morant's credit, he realized this at the conclusion of the season. I think he realized it even before the playoffs even began. He realized that this is a team that could go very far. But at the end of the day, what happened was they got in their own way. A little bit too much hubris. This is what John Morant had to say. I've just got to be better with my decision making. That's pretty much it. Off the court issues affected us as an organization pretty much and we just need more discipline. John Moran would also say that I feel like my development is more off the court than on the court, just being disciplined on both sides, off the court making better decisions, on the court being locked in even more, being a leader of this team. It pretty much starts with me. So however I attack any situation, I know my guys will follow. I've just got to be better in that area. Now, their head coach won't use that as an excuse. Taylor Jenkins said that he's not going to use distractions or anything like that as an excuse, but he referred to the early playoff exit as a pivotal moment for the Grizzlies, particularly for their young core of John Morant, Jaron Jackson Jr., and shooting guard Desmond Bain. I think we have a great culture, and your culture is going to get tested. I mean, there's going to be opportunities that are going to see how strong you are, how together you are, how resilient you are, how disciplined you are, and then you are really trying to build something day in and day out, and ultimately try to win a championship. It doesn't happen overnight. Nothing's going to be a straight line. In my opinion, this is probably the moment in time that's going to be the ultimate wake-up call. Are we going to really understand what's in the preparation in the off-season? Preparation in the season. It's what you do at work, off the court. Clearly, there are things that we've got to control and just embrace it together. How are we going to support each other through all this stuff? This is a journey that you go through from the start of the season to the end of the season, and it's not supposed to be easy, any of it. So are we going to take it lightly and take it for granted, or are we going to take a real hard look in the mirror? John Moran has the respect of a lot of players in the NBA. I, I mean, lie. They double accountability from the, from the staff. John Morant as well. Can't see him too much. Drop 45 points on the Lakers. And this was LeBron James yeah. and Anthony Davis's reaction. That boy is good. I mean, he's, he's good. I mean, you can't stop. You can't stop it. So it's not like John Morant lost the respect of the entire NBA. For me personally, I thought this was just a young man that was having a difficult time coming to grips with the amount of celebrity that he was able to attain in a relatively short time. Luckily for him, it seems like he's a little bit more grounded. I'm not necessarily gonna hold all the stuff that occurred for John Morant over the past year as random as I thought it was against him because it seems like he's learned his lesson. I don't necessarily know what the future is gonna look like for Dylan Brooks. I will say that the Memphis Grizzlies have one of the most exciting young cores in the NBA, and I think it was to their benefit to lose this early on after such a remarkable season than to win, because if they would have won or potentially made it all the way to the NBA Finals, that would have probably enabled them even more. Now they realize what got in their way and what held them back. So did the Memphis Grizzlies really go out sad given the amount of potential this team had, or do you think this was the best thing that could have potentially happened to them? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. And I'm dropping our mic until. And that's the end of this one, y'all. Let me know what y'all think about this one. Let me know what you want me to react to next in the comments right now, y'all. Link the video as well. Like, um, turn on post notifications. Click on the last reaction right here. Subscribe. And I'm out of here, man. Bar.